So with regard to looking at specific syntax procedures, we're just going to finish up uh, looking at a bunch of procedures which are generally useful to know about, pretty handy procedures. Uh, the first uh, two uh, procedures looking at refer to the keywords to and all. And these are really useful when you want to apply syntax to multiple variables at the same time. So if you don't, if you're working with syntax and you have to apply the syntax to a whole bunch of fields, rather than typing in all of the field names individually, you might have a, a very long list. You can use something like two and all. So here we have an example where uh, two uh, is helping us apply syntax to seven variables that share the same response options. It's very common with rating scales where people are asked to rate or evaluate you know, a, a number of different things. They may have different variable labels. They may have different variable names, um, but they all share the same response options. You could do the same thing with regard to uh, missing values. If you need to apply a missing value to a whole group of, of, of variables in one go, you could use the to command to do that. So here we're saying uh, value labels should be applied from the field rate one to rate seven. And because they appear in order within the data set, uh, it will it will apply uh, them to uh, from rate one to rate seven inclusively. Uh, they're all contiguous in the data set, and we'll end up with seven fields where we have these uh, five different value labels attached to them. Um, the second example is using uh, the to command or the to keyword on an analytical procedure. You could do it on on cross tabs. You could do it in frequency tables or descriptives. Here we're saying. If, uh, apply frequencies and instead of listing out all of the individual field names we're simply saying rate one to rate seven or alternatively you, you can use the all command the all keyword and that will simply run frequencies on all of the variables in the data set our second example here is looking at scratch variables so scratch variables are are temporary variables that can be used as part of a calculation process if you're doing some sort of calculation, let's say you're using a compute command or, or something like that, and you've got these intermediary calculations, uh, scratch variables are a good, a good option to work with because they won't you won't end up with these, these fields sitting uh, explicitly within the data set. Um, they'll they'll only appear temporarily as part of the calculation. And scratch variables are easy to identify because they all have a prefix of a hash symbol in front of them. So here we have a scratch variable here called years employed. Now the following could be completed in a single step. Um, you don't really need a scratch variable, but we're using it, uh, we're doing it in separate steps here, just as, a, as an illustration. So what's happening here is that the variable job time actually records the months employed by the organization. So if we want to turn that into years, we're going to divide job time by 12 and the field that that creates is going to be called hash years employed. That's our scratch variable. Then the second statement simply subtracts the number of years employed from the employee's current age to estimate the age that they started working for the organization at. So that creates a field called age start. And just to be aware, there is a keyword here, trunk, and then parentheses. That just means that the result of this age start effectively should be truncated that just means it removes decimal places so we don't end up with ages like 26.5 or 32.3 or something like that. But what we won't see in the data set is we won't see the field uh, years employed because that's that's a scratch field and it's not retained in the data file. So if I just jump out to some sample syntax here, let's see if I can find um, uh, a scratch uh, uh, syntax here. So let's go, go to file open syntax. Uh, so, uh, scratch variables and here's our example so I just run that and come back to the data set here we can see the field here age start has been created so it's estimating the age they were when they started but the field the scratch variable has not occurred because it's effectively a temporary part of the calculation the next example is delete variables uh, again very very simple here so delete variables really not a lot to it it just allows us to lift physically delete variables rather than rather than uh, you know manually going and clicking on the variable name and deleting them useful way to clean up a data set if you've got unwanted variables in there if i went back to the scratch variables uh, syntax here and then typed in 
delete, obviously it's going to come up, delete variables. And then if you can't remember the names of the variables, uh, a good tip is to go to utilities, variables, and then just find the names of the variables that you want to, that you want to put in there. So if you've got something like previous experience here and you want to paste that in, you can paste it in and date of birth, you can paste that in. And then of course you put a full stop in the end and that will get rid of those fields It'll delete them from, from the data set so that they no longer occur. Okay, the next example is renaming variables. So renaming variables simply changes the variable names. Again, it can be applied to individual variables or on a group basis, and it can be used as part of a subcommand. So there's a slash rename, and you can apply this to when you're loading a data file, such as get file, or when you're saving a data file um, using the save out file command. So here we have renaming the variable job cap to job type, here we have renaming a group of variables. So salary, sal begin, the minority become current pay, starting pay, and BAME group. And here's an example of uh, renaming the variable gender to sex while we're saving the data set. So that's quite, quite useful to know about. And we've also got a slash keep and slash drop. This is similar to delete. It's literally getting rid of, of files, but uh, sorry, rid of variables. Um, slash keep and slash drop respectively allow users to either specify the subset of variables that they wish to retain in a file or the variables they don't want to include. And generally speaking, these are used uh, again with, with get file and save out file. So when you're loading data or when you're saving data, if you, and you can use either slash keep or slash drop. So slash keep here, for example, if I was loading the data, employee data with age, it would just load these three fields. It would just show me ID, salary, and beginning salary. Whereas if I was saving the data file out and I wanted to get rid of fields, then slash drop would allow me to get rid of fields that I didn't want to, to, to retain. And, and lastly, we've got output modify. Output modify is quite a powerful command in that it allows us to change what we're seeing in the output window. It's very good when we want to clean up the output or the viewer window. We want to get rid of stuff uh, that, uh, that we don't want to include in a report, for example. Um, so it'll automatically delete objects like warnings or syntax logs, but it also can be used to highlight specific values such as totals in a table. So this example syntax here deletes all preceding output except for tables and charts. So you can see that the procedure here simply says output modify and then it's a slash select that says select all except tables and charts and then delete everything except for the stuff that it didn't select, which is tables and charts. So it leaves them alone. So just to show you that, if I come back here to um, the uh, SPSS uh, data editor window, and we'll just go to output modify. Here I've got some output. I've got some output here. You can see that we've got some logs here right at the top. I've got some, I've got a little warning and that sort of stuff. I don't necessarily want to keep that stuff. So I go to um, the output modify syntax here and run the first bit. Output modify, select all, accept tables and charts and delete them. And I run that. You can see immediately everything but the last log uh, output here is has been deleted. So it's got rid of that. The last log is the actual output modify um, statement itself. It's like, so that's quite useful. But what, what else can we do with it? Well, if we uh, look at another example here, we can, we can actually use it to highlight values. So the following syntax finds frequency tables in the output viewer and emboldens the total values in each table. So that's quite useful. So if I go back to my output modify syntax here and run that uh, second output modify procedure. What we find is that the total uh, row in all of the frequency tables and just the frequency tables has been emboldened. So that's the kind of thing that you can do uh, in those sorts of procedures and, and they're useful to know about. Lastly, for this section, it makes sense to touch on some of the more useful functions within a syntax window editor itself. Um, syntax window editor has a whole bunch of different little features that you can make, sense, make use of. For example, breakpoints can be used to stop command execution at pre-specified positions. So you can check the results at each stage while moving on. Bookmarks allow you to more easily navigate 
large command syntax files. There's an auto indentation uh, function where you can automatically uh, format your syntax for improved readability using indentation style, a bit like uh, the syntax that's pasted from a dialogue. And you can step through the command syntax one command at a time, advancing to the next command of a single click. And finally, there's a split view uh, procedure where you can go to window split view, and this splits the syntax editor into two panes so that you can check one part of the syntax file without losing focus on another. So here's a little uh, uh, illustration of that. You can see here the breakpoints that have been inserted. You just need to right click on that point and insert a breakpoint. Here are some bookmarks which you can add. You can add some uh, uh, um, text in there. You'll see an error pane at the bottom. You get line numbers and you can also ask it to split the window. If I just zoom out to uh, SPSS a syntax here and we'll look at the um let's let's look at uh, some sample syntax so got some sample syntax here you can see you've got these little buttons up here that says toggle a breakpoint so you can put a breakpoint in there and you can say show me it or not show me it you can right click here and you can say clear all breakpoints or you can toggle a bookmark you put a bookmark in give it a name here are the steps that we're stepping through we step through each one at a time um, we can also go to um, window and split. If we split it, you can see here you can scroll up and down, and hold one bit constant. And you can also see the uh, you also see the error pane at the bottom. So there are some little tools that's worth experimenting with within the uh, syntax editor window itself.